Hello. Welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited. Back where it all started. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. The internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah. Now ah, this could be interesting. Now, now that noise, you, do you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki and it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials and they're free because we want to thank people who, uh, who paid, um, for the, for the audio books we did, the, uh, the last two series. So thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't long, seen yeah. it yet. Yeah. Carl's have his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. Still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked 6336, Carl Pilkinson believes in ghosts, is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper, a proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's gonna be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. <laughs> that's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that, that's but, just... but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when, uh, mm. I was living at home and, uh, was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed and, uh, I'm lying there and you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh, there's something going on. Mm. And, uh, I sort of look over my quilt and there's nothing there thinking it's weird that. So, uh, turn me back on it. I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there, I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it. But then there's like a really high-pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this. And it's the, the high-pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back even as a kid. No, but you know, everyone's there, got no. little hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And, uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this, and, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs, mm. right? And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly, went back to bed, the high-pitched noise had gone, went to sleep, get up the next day, Charlie from next door comes round, he goes, Hilda's dead, mm. right? And, uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of, uh, would, would, would you think it'd be weirder that, uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff, and- Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, it's gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of- No, no, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit had left was whizzing round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one- Why that's did they, why do they whiz round when what? they, when they die? Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, it's mm. Carl. Oh, no, no but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not 
proof of anything, Carl, mm. beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? No, it, it just sort of, you know, what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time oh, did she die? What time does that happen? Sorry? Exactly what time did she die? Uh, my, no, wife, my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time is that? <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, <laughs> oh, phew, that's bad. When did that happen? Right. What mm. time? And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember distinctly. What did they say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they? All these it stories. Is, or is it? Or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's he's misremembering the. the yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But I tell you this though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think that's on the gravestone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Did, you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you, you what can we what? say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you can ever say. There's nothing. Let's <laughs> just think about Hilda that lived her life. <laughs> Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven specifically. And was a bog standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but, yeah, no, in a bog-standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about that, again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh no. Okay, no, let, let's, for the sake More of likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, on it? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and he's sort of floating about and you go, oh, all right. That, that looks normal, floating about. No, but, but, an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always gonna have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's- You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so- Can we're you now believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right, after this- Which we're not- We be, move yeah. on to another life. Yeah. We're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop it- crop. Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. Yeah, um, well I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop. Just something we need too to get by. Too much fruit <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's gonna do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for a, an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but they, they, do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? We talked about like it in the, in the other podcast and that that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It was painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and it no, was nothing. No, but I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine. Keep going back. It's better than working it. You don't have to promote you know, sell the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Carl Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year. Mm. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want- why don't you- why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean, if you- if you're an author, you've got to get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're- you la buy you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh, you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. 
But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, just You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it, but most why have of you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in extra material. Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it in a drawer? Will, they will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it. So I went back, right, and they had the uh, the ultrasound thing where they they look in to see what else is in there. Mm. Uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about ninety-eight. <laughs> now <laughs> why why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All Such I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her uh, a gown on, and because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open <laughs> on the back, <laughs> and it was horrible. It looked like like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after, right? <laughs> it was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing <laughs> is, it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body, it's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get... You, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we- maybe we were only meant to live to be forty. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, I've had my time. If they're looking after an old woman who's about ninety-eight, I'm having a go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cause of course! Because you want to live on. She, she might have been flirting it. with you. No, she was- Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that but you're going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done. You know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that. And she was pushing the uh, the thing down, and she said, "Oh, you can have a look if you want." So what? What down where? On on my kidney. She was pushing like this little scanner thing. Oh right. She was going to have a look. I was going, "I don't want to have a look." She's going, "What's up with you?" I said, "I don't want to see me inside." It's did they have a tube? Did they put a tube down the end of your knob? Yeah, they did all that. We've talked about that in the in the other. But you're unconscious, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, it's but- It's still gonna bother you, isn't it? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you- you did it willingly. What? It's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain and- Well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me, you know what you're doing, just do it. I'm well, not yeah, gonna have so a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again, I'm not gonna go, oh, I've had it done before, I know what to do, I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she- she was pushing the- the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her, because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd that she- that's- that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. Well, th this doctor? The woman doctor. Well, doctor. Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around, because he's a chat show host, he spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was asking- Because he's got a, a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look alright? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney. She could have quite easily just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was looking, she was looking I'm but concentrating, but she I'm was at work. looking at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work, she's doing something. No, but just- If she was here now going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go, shut the fuck up, I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> We'd 
like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as, you know, as we have done since we've known him, really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And, um, and I, I was asked recently, when I was going back to Bristol, if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh, right. You know, just talking about careers, and particularly my career. And, uh, I went down there, it was in Bristol, it was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol, you're uh, Exactly, they love me You're a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol, you've done- you're a Golden Globe winning uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By a know? mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called <laughs> Steve Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously, on my mind, I was picturing Carl. And yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years. Sort of IQ-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I went So there, what did you talk to them about? And I was supposed to talk about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual Did ideas. they know who you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, what's Richard Rage like? And I said, um... You've got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think, and how, you know, and try to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. Oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested. That's they were. Great. So I, I know Justin Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never met them. And I, they went, one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I went, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. And, oh, but God. they were loving this, and the teacher was going, would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing! Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met Girls Aloud. <laughs> Oh, me and girls alone. Some of the times we've had together, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> but uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with with people with children like that because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't. To me, I can't grasp the difference really in conversation and chat between, say, a seven year old and a thirteen year old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand? Do you know what I mean? It's. I find it really I remember hard. I once when I was about nine. Uh, the. The, the headmaster, Debbie Headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand up, he used to do a little fable. There's uh, uh, one I remember where um, he uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up, he said, uh, You, um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board. And he squeezed it all out, right? And he squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went, Now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle, and he goes, You can't do it. He said, It's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. Yeah, yeah. And they're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of conceptual. nine. conceptual, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just stop misbehaving or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them? Or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment, because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. 
No, I mean, it, it, who said no? Yeah. Well, I, well, I did. No? I did at first, and Brilliant. then Suzanne said, "Look, you're not. You know, it's not really a choice. It's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about. Is it a good thing? So you, you've, you've been asked. You should take it on." But what are, are they? What if they? Hold on. If you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them, and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. They're good friends. So now they're hearing for the first time that you didn't want to be. Godfather. Yeah, but I think I think that's good because they can hear that. You know, it wasn't. I didn't just do it because I was asked. I thought about it. I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And, uh, I was, I was just Well, it's nothing him. but tokenistic, is it? You're not Well, really this is what I looked into. I said, we went back and I said, right, I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in. And I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said, right, how many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family. You're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I've only got a small flat. It would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out and, uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby, it's spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. <laughs> and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking, it's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, well, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories, like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your gob. No, but you don't need to hear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said that's to you- That's the point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people- that's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen. And then you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman mm. and they lived that And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But, but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Why, so what would your end be to a story such as The Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show, he's put in the hospital, he becomes something of a celebrity, then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly and he, he, he joined the circus and he was the, the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change, change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't, you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Mm. So there's no point making out that he went on, loads of women fancied him and, you know, he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die. Yeah. But at the same time- Was shot by poachers? Just show, just for show- his, a, For his a, tusk? A, show a few positives. You know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid, but you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in, and she came up and she sat down with a mate, and she was talking loudly, going on about, "Oh, the baby's lovely." They said it's got uh, it's got lovely big eyes. Uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog, but I thought I don't know her. There's only there's only so much you can say to to a stranger. I don't know what kept kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something in, there's something. It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening <laughs> to conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed there. over there. I mean, it's a, it's a proper, proper thing out there. Here it's sort of half 
hearted, a few people, a few middle class families sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here, though, if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but, suddenly that would be a big. Well, Ameri- a big day. America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So yeah, it's it's all it's all. It's all from that. I, I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we, 50 years ago? So I think it's crept Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, pr- We can yeah. sell stuff for and, and And film and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but um, out there, it's, it, it was... They, they start, like, weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated, like, proper, proper. And, um, but I saw a baker's, a little bakery in, um, in, in Soho, um... And uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just—it's just. I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, it's it, a bit think, well, that, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last, time I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just... Well, they could do it, it in, like, a morgue or something, just to sort of... Brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative, and they go, what's the spiders all over? It's, uh, 31st October. No, oh, but, okay. But just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about, you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, um, uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their... Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f- a, f- a friend of mine um, was um, tr- trained to be a doctor, and um, in his first year, uh, when they actually they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient, and... Uh, Two o- other doctors came in, and I won't say his name. Um, they said, uh, "Can you um, can you go and check on Mister So and So?" He went, "Yeah," and changed his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came after about ten minutes. They came running and said, "What did you do? What did you do?" And uh, they went in there and said, "I just changed the drip." He goes, "Well, he's dead. He's dead." He was going, well, d- uh, "I just changed the drip. I did this and that." And they started laughing. He goes, "No, he was dead when we sent you in there." Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. Th- the fact that people die and that it's, Exactly. You know, yeah, it's so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he thought he'd just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go... I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> intern. Um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. No, but they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was, uh, working on a brain, mm. right? Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best just to keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, let's not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right? the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there is certain, amazing. There's certain operations, isn't there, where they go, you know, we can knock you out for that, but for this one we want to know. It's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to- Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, sure, yeah, no, so it's anyway. so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, that hurt. That, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings. Don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You what? can't- 
Can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason, but anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going- I reckon he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world he's not, he's sat on a hard-backed- I think it's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, the go like, get, get, yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's- he's So for the weekend, sir? He's- oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's- he's cut the skin off, and, uh, you know, chopped a bit, and you're always, you're always gonna get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of. Whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. He fixes it. I don't know what he was doing, but if, don't you? If you, don't it, know about, you don't know about. You don't that. know the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't, I don't want. Oh, okay, so they on. sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head. Oh, this bit. happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it. head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the, the head bit back on, and then, uh, <laughs> Can you pass me the sharpie sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, this isn't fitting this. He's going, I don't know. And, and, and do you know, like, because the Right, if this turns out that <laughs> it's someone true. else's head- Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat- <laughs> Meow! No, You've sewn a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that. He's trying to sew it, and he's thinking, why isn't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because you know he's been messing about in it and things yeah. swell, don't they? And messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it. He's going, I don't, I don't understand this. And he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff. And mm. you know, what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know. Bit. There's a queue as well. People want their brain done. And they're, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up. So <laughs> I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, no, no. Just uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just <laughs> take it off. Do the brain. Put it back on. Anyway, what happens is he mm. has to start rubbinging. It's <laughs> to start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having to look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he, he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where is kidding. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well, so when he throws things it goes through there first? I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never gonna believe it, I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why is so he cut- I don't understand, why is there- why That's is it in what two I mean. Bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. You cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. And he, he cooked his face before <laughs> he cut it out. I'm just saying how how flesh it sticks together well. Yeah, but when he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but had it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's rum he's rummaging in the bin, and does he find the head? He found the bit, and then he's like, "Oh, sorry about that." And he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm sure he gives it a bit of a rinse. But um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how Nonsense. you know you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor, okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? At what point did when I thought this was a story well, about how doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did he did make at a the joke? end, he sort of laughed and he sort of said, "Oh, there you go, it's back on." But oh, f good job, we you know the bin men didn't come or whatever. <laughs> and, they, and they made a joke out of it. I've never heard such nonsense. <laughs> I've never God, heard just made such that joke nonsense. Up. Right, Carl, let's do a competition. Chance to win uh, some of the product that we've got out that Carl doesn't want to um, talk about because he's too lazy. No, it's not that. If it's, um, oh. Well, if you do want to uh, win a copy of this book, um, Ricky Gervais presents The World of Carl Pilkington. It's by um, all three of us, uh, and it's. Some of the, uh, uh, musings and thoughts and ideas from the, the podcasts. Carl has, uh, um, got some new theories. It's illustrated throughout. Um, by Carl Pilkington. By Carl Pilkington. It's got, um, excerpts from the diary. They're genuine, aren't they? They're just, they're photostatted things from the diary that yeah. people haven't seen. And it's fascinating read. Um, we can sign that. We can also give you a, uh, copy of this new three disc set CD of the best of, is it the first series of the Ricky Gervais show? Yeah, well it's got everything actually. It's, uh, it's got, the whole, um, twelve first series that, that we did with, um, Guardian Unlimited, the award-winning, record-breaking podcast. Um, it's also got, uh, some excerpts, if you want the, the best of, you can put that on. Um, and it's got, uh, one hour of new material, which we recorded especially for it, but you can't get that. You can't buy that in the shops till the 13th of November. And I throw in the new Flannimals book, Flannimals of the Deep. It's the third in the trilogy, Carl. Are you excited about that? Yeah. And, the. Uh, the question is, uh, do you want them? 
Okay, that's the quiz question. That's the quiz question, yeah. Okay. Is if that a trick question? No, 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 no. It's just the, the, the first correct answer. Uh, I'm not going to worry what the correct answer is, but do you want them? And think, what, you know, if you do want them, then that might, you know, do, do, you know, what's the answer? Uh, and you can send that to... Podcast at rickygervais.com. Include your name and address, and if you're the lucky winner, then we will send this stuff to you if you want it. And it's the first come, first serve, okay? So the first correct answer to the question... Do you want it? Do you want that stuff? Do you want, do you want, do you want Flanimals and the CD box set and the book and that? Okay, well if you know the correct answer to that, podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck everyone. Well, thank you for listening to the first of these three special podcasts, uh, with Guardian Unlimited. Um, the next one is out for Thanksgiving, um, 23rd of November. We don't actually celebrate Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? Uh, it's a- it's a thing in America. Right. Uh, it's like the- it's like the big holiday. Probably- probably rivals Christmas. Probably bigger than Christmas in- Well, what do we do here? But we don't celebrate here, do we? So? It's the- it's a day, innit? Yeah, but no one's gonna remember that, are they? 23rd they of November they can remember, can't they? Yeah, but it's nice- Well, they should it's remember that's one day before my birthday if we're gonna celebrate anything. Okay. Well, we have we, got this one. The next one's the 23rd of November, and the next one's the 25th of December. Can we- c c well, how can I remember 25th of December? Um, well, Christmas. That's fair enough, that's Christmas, but Thanksgiving, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay! The next one's out about the 23rd of November, then yeah, after that- about the before my- day before my birthday. Oh, they're gonna remember that, aren't they? It's Steve Day in Bristol. Yeah. Anyway. If you've enjoyed this special edition of The Ricky Gervais Show, the entire back catalogue is still available on iTunes under audiobooks, by the way, not podcasts, audiobooks, and you can get everything we've ever done. I'd like to thank the guys at Positive Internet for hosting this. Those great guys, what would we do without them? So, it's, uh, goodbye from me. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Bye. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. Bye. Welcome to the second in this series of three special free podcasts with The Guardian Unlimited. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. These are a special thank you to all the fans that bought the last few, uh, podcasts we've done. Still available on iTunes. <laughs> you can't miss it. It's at number one in the charts. Carl, it's Thanksgiving. I don't know what that means. I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly in agreement with you, actually. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, no, but it was, uh, you know, the arbitrary dates are easy to remember for some people. <laughs> Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Easy to remember. I don't think Thanksgiving is. Well, it is in America, and- Yeah, yeah but I've never, I couldn't tell you, I mean, I've, I've been around for thirty odd years. I've never celebrated one of them. I've never done anything about it. No one has. I don't know any relation who has ever said, <laughs> are you popping around for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I don't know, when is it? I've never done it. Because it's not celebrated in this so country. why are we celebrating it? <laughs> We're not celebrating it. It's an arbitrary date to do a podcast. I just don't know what it's about. I mean, before you celebrate something. You don't celebrate you Halloween, know? do you? But we did that. No, but it annoys me how people don't actually know what the occasion is, but they celebrate it. Kids don't know what Christmas is about these days. It's just like, oh, I'll get some toys. That's yeah, what well, I mean. So Thanksgiving, it's just another one, isn't it? It's another event. Okay, why do you celebrate Christmas then? Uh, cause everyone else does. You can't get Brilliant. away from it. I'd quite happily block it out. If I did a new diary, I'd leave out that date and go, come on, let's, let's get on, let's do something good. Well, you, well, you go on holiday every two weeks. What's that to celebrate? No, I'm just but saying. But people need a little break, don't they? they need, you know, it's a great. He moment. doesn't. Christmas is a great time. Even yeah, if but, you but, take but away the problem the is, what I don't like about it is everyone's off at the same time, so everything stops. See, what I'd do is I'd say to people, "Do you like Christmas? Yeah, right. When do you want to celebrate this year?" And let them do it whenever they want. Well, that's ridiculous. Why? As long as you're remembering baby Jesus, does it matter when you're remembering him? But I, I. I I'm an atheist and I celebrate Christmas because it's a time of year where everyone is off and everyone gets together. Yeah, I know. I don't care what they call it. The fact that we're all doing it at the same time is what's nice about no, it. There's it's a not. sense of community. No. National community. Everyone shuts down by about December 15th or whatever. And then it doesn't get going again till like January the 6th. But what is it you're missing out on during this period? Just, it's like two weeks there. That's, n I mean, that bit between Christmas and New Year, you might as well delete that out of the calendar. Yeah, because heaven forbid you can't pop down the library because it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> all, all that reading you've got to catch up on. <laughs> I'm just saying that we're wasting time. What, I've what never are you doing though? <laughs> I've never seen anyone on this planet waste as much time as you. If say... you're not on holiday, you're following an insect around the fucking park. <laughs> so don't give me that shit. I'm just saying that I, I, I don't like fun. <laughs> <laughs> never a 
true well, words. Well, there says. we are. We've got to the nub oh, of it here. You don't go. like fun. This is true. You don't like no. anything. Christ Almighty! You oh. do not like fun. No organized, <laughs> organized fun. I hate that thing. I've said it a bit before about you know it's that date. That's what you've got to do. <laughs> Will there come a time when someone goes, "We've done it. We've done enough of this." Will there come a time and for Thanksgiving? Possibly. Oh. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, things things change, don't they? And you'll be happy then, will you? Uh, in five thousand years' time, when we all worship Glong. Yeah, we uh, just make a change. That's that's all I want. Because you know I've been keeping a diary. Yeah. Uh, what did you have in the calf yesterday, for example? We can read about that later. It's just like Ricky said. Oh, are you gonna you gonna do you know another one next year? And I wouldn't because it's you know you do the same stuff every year, don't you? It's set up the same way. January. <laughs> February. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same routine. Yeah. And, and if you're writing in Why a are book, they always doing them in the same order, those uh, months? It sickens me, Rick. Oh. I tell you. <laughs> you see, it's just easy to put stuff off whilst we've got this calendar, whereas if you didn't have a date, you'd have to do everything straight away. What? Say if I was in charge. Oh, mm. God, heaven forbid, yeah. And yeah. someone said, that building needs knocking down. Yeah. It's dangerous. If we didn't have a calendar, you go, mm, let's do it now then. Whereas, because we've got a calendar, it's easy to say, next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I love him! I love him! His oh. theories are amazing! I mean, I don't know, maybe he is a real visionary thinker. Maybe he is free- you know what I, th what I like about him though? All his- all his thoughts, they're about- they're about freedom of expression in a strange way. He's not burdened by anything. He just goes, well, why do we think like that? But he who... questions everything. Like a true visionary scientist. But who gets a diary come Christmas time, which I know you hate, you yeah. know, for the next year and thinks, you f- what? what a piece of oh, shit. Now I've got to put some do stuff when I want to do it. I'm gonna take out next Wednesday. <laughs> There's no such thing no. as next Wednesday. No, but what I'm saying is, before the year's even started, I know in that new diary I can whiz forward to December 25th and I go, oh, another Christmas. I don't know what you mean. So everything's set in stone before I've even started the new year. It's like, oh, Pancake Tuesday, that's coming up. <laughs> so someone's already Remember decided- Remember Tuesday. Someone's already <laughs> decided. Someone's already telling me what I'm doing on half of the year. <laughs> but oh, and but just all those nice. pages oh, are blank, you know. Carl, for you to fill up with stuff. Oh, guess what? Guess where my birthday is again? 23rd <laughs> of September. I'm just saying, move them about a bit, move the days about a bit so it doesn't get predictable. But when we- when we change Pancake Tuesday to, uh, Thursday, Thursday. do we tell anyone else? Um, yeah, they do an advert on the telly. Just saying, don't forget to buy your pancake mix. Uh, but so why? Carl, why not just stick with what we've already got? Because if you know Actually, it's buying everyone I anyway- Actually, I wouldn't put a date on that pancake <laughs> day anyway. Just have it when you want. <laughs> have it when you want. <laughs> There's no big deal. You've got to make them yourself. It's not like some place is opening to do it. Have them when you want. I don't know why that's got a special day on it. Sick of it. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving is based on, uh, new settlers to a new land surviving. Yeah. And, uh, I was talking to Carl in the week. We were talking about new settlers and everything, and I was thinking, imagine if you, uh, had to, um, start a new settlement now, okay? There's something wrong with the world, okay? The world was kaput, mm -hmm. okay? And we found another planet. So, Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that adore that, but you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know... As I say, you don't need to. So worry what's about happening here? Is this? Is this? It's going to be wiped out. Okay, it's going to be wiped out. But there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people. Okay, and they've got them there. They've got these. They've got these sort of breeder clones there. So it's going to be populated. You're going to have the workers, the drones, everything like that. But you want to take six, I suppose, sort of um, uh, world lords to teach, to lay down the politics, the 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 teachings, the laws. The government. I'd hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um, and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh, to the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take and why? Uh, and where, where are we going? We, Mars. <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Are you coming with me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. 
There's rivers, there's forests, there's animals, okay? But we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job? Yeah. So, who, who's the first person? Probably, um... Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why? Why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he, he knows knows his way about up there, don't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever are picked next, if they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey. On as board. It is. You don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Or, or, do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But but is a, Carl no. is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six because he may be very useful getting to the planet. No, but, but I've once always you wanted got there, to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it? When I'm in a rocket, how long is it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean. No, it's so. not Mars. It's somewhere else. Okay, so it's a year to get there, and then yeah, well, that's what I mean. So it's a good chance to have a chat with him uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so Matt and Moore. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think I think you know. Well, his, why do you why do you think that? Just because he spent his whole life talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been. And I feel sorry for him. You know, most people, when, they, when they're when they into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, people uh, don't know who Patrick Moore is, he's, um, an 80-year-old, uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, let him have, a, have a bit of a good life. So, Moore's on board. Yeah, Patrick Moore. He's, he's on. Right, out of five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver. <laughs> why, why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone, because they say that, like, you, uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um. He couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey Twizzlers. I think he's, he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've, we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who Listen, made I love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great, yeah. but he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore because <laughs> he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't <laughs> pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to, like I say, food's important. When you're low, there's nothing better. If you're a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good. But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. And Keep before you do all that, you need a good meal. So, th Jamie Oliver, he'll be- th that's his job. It's like, when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one, really, Can I suggest gets going. Just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need- Oh, this is gonna take a fucking gardener. Yeah. It's- it's like the- it's- uh, It's the world, but new. It's the- it's that- exactly. It's the world but new, untouched by humans. There's- there's been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars. Just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore <laughs> and Jamie Oliver pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else, Carl? Go now. First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> Again, he's a genius, and he's a, you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there, just to sort of when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around, then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about <laughs> 150. I mean, <laughs> if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. <laughs> Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived, have they? These have lived and they'll- they, they can so- and they're useful, like I say. Patrick Moore's done his bit, he's got us there. Uh, Oliver, has cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there, we'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think a you're camping trip is your I think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. So, so you've got David two. Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Moore, you've got Jamie Oliver, <laughs> you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> 
<laughs> as a dinner party with yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. Oh. Uh, Come on in two more. I'd text someone who's a bit daft. Just so. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered, believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean, though. I don't want them having to go at me going, why are you here? I'd put point the attention somewhere else to text someone else who'd sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that then? Paul Denan or someone like that. <laughs> it really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver and Paul Denan. <laughs> and starting, a brand new world. Starting life again. <laughs> okay then. Brilliant. Oh God. Right. One more. This is an amazing. This is a, it's going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down. Oh God! Don't know. It have to be uh, a woman. I think you got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Is could have another another woman chef or? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> another it's, chef. it's mainly eating. It's 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 mainly. Chef. Oh, he's God. got that covered with Oliver, but no, I no, he's got technogenic in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh God! Oh God! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags <laughs> and everything. Or a nurse. Now you're thinking. Abby Titmus. <laughs> Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And, um, hopefully they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about ten years' time. Or at least begin tests in the ten years' time, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? To how many? Uh, how many um, are these uh, mice did they experiment on? <laughs> Three, probably. Right. They were. Mm. It wasn't taking place in a farmhouse, was it at all? With them? I didn't read the intricacies of the. Did they story. have tails? Did they still have their tails? The three blind mice. Because yeah, they. I don't know. Again, well, I'm, um, not, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, okay. what's your concern? Well, though? I think I know what happened there. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think the farmer's wife probably uh, got annoyed right. at them running well, after why? her. Right. Uh. But how could they run after her? Because they're blind. I don't know. I think they used a sense of smell and hearing. They could hear her, uh, uh, clogs. <laughs> and they followed the sound of the big fat clogs. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, they got their comeuppance. <laughs> they lost their tails. So now they're blind with no tails. <laughs> Is uh, that I, not the story? I don't, I think you've confused, um. Okay. Another more recent story. Okay. With, with that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that then, then. I don't know. Carl, thoughts though? That extraordinary, isn't it, to be able to, I mean, to be able to cure blindness would it, be a it, remarkable it, achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. If I was blind and I went in for the meeting with mm. the doctor. Yeah. And they said, do you want yours doing? And then they said like, mm. I've done it on mice, that wouldn't be good enough for me. I'd say, look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice, just say we've done this on eyes. <laughs> Because <laughs> if he goes, what eyes? Just say, just a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, n it's not the same. And it no. sort of, it would make me go, J I'll leave it. Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the, uh, the you've put in mice eyes. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of cats. It's just eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with, and even if it was blind, I just, I wouldn't like it. Right. Uh. And I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well I went for a what's her name, Steve, you don't know, I, I've, I've had, mm. uh, problems with my legs. Oh, oh, Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 70 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three times in one week, he goes, now his legs rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. I don't, I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. And he's going, oh, right. Christ mm. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're thirty, what are you? Thirty, thirty-three. Right, thirty-three, sorry to start off with such a hard question. <laughs> but how have you been working for thirty years? <laughs> well, I just have, I sort of, uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm well, just Well, you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because <laughs> you were just titting about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? 
I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 <laughs> years then, okay, good, Yeah, right. but I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I? And that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. <laughs> it all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. when I kicked my height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, A, like it's a classic story that everyone should know, <laughs> everyone and also right. the phrase kicking my own height. Yeah. No, Explain so what you mean. Just kick me height when I was, when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands, You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I kicked were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go, I kick me height. So you were, so you are four and a half foot and you've put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right, okay. <laughs> Imagine mind. seeing that in the playground. They go, get <laughs> Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. But so why, <laughs> why did he fall over? They tickets, the neighbours were cracking <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Why did he fall over? Did, did, your, did you hit I yourself just in the I head? I didn't have kick the eye. I mean, my leg got eye up, but I was that chuffed that I got that eye, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> Like, what the fuck he's did that to, look like? He's got to think it all through. I <laughs> thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, like, you, you, you stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ But you almighty. didn't think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> it looked like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back. Yeah. And, uh, and I did some damage, I think. Mm, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done, because when you get older, I mean it was a kidney stone thing, one, once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, gotta start looking after your body. Do you think body. you could die of the, the, uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 <laughs> years? Well, you just- Do you think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever though, I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You yeah. know, if there's anyone listening you can always there, who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what, what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella to, uh, like a professional, uh, leg rubber. Uh, a professional leg rubber. Yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said, uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of, like, podcasts? I said, am I in charge of my brain? Or is my brain in charge of me? Yeah, do you remember what I said? It's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah, well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber. Professional yeah. leg rubber, yeah. Right, and he is professional. Yeah. Right, Remember, so leg rubber, you haven't <laughs> said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right? Or? Back, back rubbing as well, he does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well and your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so, so he lifted the leg up and I went, right, well, stop doing that. Was this above a laundrette, this surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had, like, towels and all that on oh, the- Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So, um- Definitely a laundrette. So, so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got yeah, towels, underpants, through his, pants, yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through he said, you haven't got 20p over you for the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, you're, you're outside of the body. Is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body's yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> so he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid this as well. Mm -hmm. Putting me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that, I said, oh, you know, that, that's- that He went, oh, shut <laughs> the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> he probably said that, he said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional rubber or- He's a doctor, he's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want one of these sheets to come out nice and soft. <laughs> he said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. 
It's because military. you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I tell me mm. about it. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, "Oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's, who's gullible it. enough to spend forty six quid for this oh, hokum." He said, "You're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them." Rather than them being in charge of the So, brain. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you. <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like 15, no, he saw a right fucking sucker coming. <laughs> no, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason- Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well I am doing, I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times. Why? And try to get you? out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is wait to- well, what's the wisdom he's gonna come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I will kind of- yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is- Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking- You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know like how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, <laughs> he said the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus. Right? He said, mm. uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep- You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh Close your eyes and see- <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. <laughs> you're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> Okay. He said, and just think about <laughs> no, nothing else. He, I said, he's a witch. <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he tell you to put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like lie down, shut it. your eyes, and and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there. And it just wasn't working because. Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was, you even were, though You were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no, it- <laughs> <laughs> He found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. You were still oh, using your face yeah. even though they were shut. What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm gonna die! I am going to die! Right. So if anything, okay. this guy's just made your stress levels worse. Yeah, that's so amazing. That's amazing. Okay, if someone out there's listening, um, could, could you put in order the top, uh, ten most stupid things Carl's ever said? And to me, that is number one. That is now number- well that- that's overtaken, uh, uh, is your brain in charge of you or is you in charge of your brain? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Oh, shit, that has only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got you going to do? I've got to do As until far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know, when does the diary end? 31st of December, usually. Yeah. Do you it know, the typical, there? always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when I'll do it till and then, uh... Why do that? Why just, why be conformist? Why, why end on December? Why not end on... January the 31st. Weird that you should go, don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me ma'am called me to ask me to like, fuck me, you're right, that like, look, that should be. Me ma'am called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified <laughs> flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean. Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. 
There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got news story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> it adds up, doesn't oh, it, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. <laughs> oh god, what's wrong? Oh, it starts off! It starts <laughs> off moaning! The first thing he does is start moaning! He wakes up and goes, oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh god! I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> that was I'm the gonna Madeira burst. cake. The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's <sighs> one of my little pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> Suzanne, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a man. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, <laughs> it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just. Oh, you we were. were. No, I, well, I you know. You studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence of other worlds down men's pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. He rather than he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but I, it reminds you want to be right. me. You want to be specific. Of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. More. Still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They're of course, money. they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people thinking, I hope people buy this. They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're. But uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, can you get one to London? To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Carl, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, all that plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages. <laughs> But <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite got, stuff in we've here. We've got to publish the diary. I mean this is never mind peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special C D I, I, I it just it's amazing. You've got you can't you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's <laughs> always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> always been going to every news agency in London. 
Looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. Uh, London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. They were saying yeah. how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five <laughs> times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- I don't know. I have no idea. I've- I, Every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah. Some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a byproduct. They're a machine, they don't go, watch me make this <laughs> noise, make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing but something. Why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking I know. The, noise? the printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's, it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it? And the way that that impacts on the, uh, the surrounding air. That's what noise, you know, how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson yeah, Rocker came and I went, <laughs> I went, can you make it go, <laughs> yeah, ma, 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 yeah, ma, 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 yeah, ma, 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 no. It's what, that's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises. Nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or- <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there, there can't be, be many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, chimpanzee that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it cuz that jingle is very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. Some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought oh great it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the uh in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show, got everything. It's got the, the 12 shows and MP3, it's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying, I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it, I haven't got an iPod, I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend who, uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift. Or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we've had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> so we get, so let's give those away again, the same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these, we'll send these no, to Rachel. Different we'll get ones. You get so, so you get, do you, do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannimals of the Deep, okay? Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. 
Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures, but that taken by Rich Hardcastle of um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes in their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We'll put some pictures up on the website. Go to wickedgerays.com and you'll see you see what you could uh, we'd be winning. Yeah, yeah. So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff, but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um. Okay. Th th so so those prizes. Uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't it? know about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, it's stopped for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over the year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's Looking back at the year... A year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen, uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on my windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. Uh, put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why would you do that? What, why- why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. No, and so some ruffians stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and, uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And, uh, I saw- Planned out. This is- <laughs> I bet- Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through, but with legs. And, um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> that, that's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> we they got were going, biscuit. biscuits over here! But I can't, that, what, <laughs> Come what, what, what was it, it Like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet... Not that far. They're, but, but they're still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird. That that happened. I never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. <laughs> and that's, that's you never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. That's what's He's nice, isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na you know the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see-through thing, you do eating a biscuit. Uh, that's that's mind. where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of uh, anything. I've sort of gone out of my way to, to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's but happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, 
a creature which you can't even identify that or you name. You don't know, right? It, 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 you don't know what it is, right? Um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that. What is that? How is that useful? Just because everything is is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you, and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl thinks. Or where thinks, it happened, but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from Mexico. He's thinking, as I can't believe it. They, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being uh, yeah. it, it, taking the it starch and the flour. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that. These things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But, they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's going to happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now over time, you know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are now. What evidence have you got what that they're getting think? more violent? But Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they, they really like cocky, they come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. <laughs> and that's that's what I'm saying. They've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that you know, you, you look at people around the world how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of you know ideas on on how to cook food differently, and we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were apparently. Everything's time. Yeah. Time makes you more intelligent. Well, no, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> It was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to some- I can't even be bothered explaining it, but, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, everything- everything's moving on. Yeah, but- but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man, it's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so Come on, oh, he's got a date. Get, Get a life, it. man. Hello, PlayStation 3, is yeah, he got Hello. Hello. Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. <laughs> Get a life. High five, man. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in. You know, you get case. a stocking. No, getting getting some condoms. What to put over your head? <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, no I uh, I thought it'd be worth getting some condoms in. You know, it's just, it's Christmas party season, and uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, and I was weird because the, the the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it, so sort because of, I th thought that they they would it, you had to open it. Try know, it on, you, try well, it on. <laughs> exactly. okay, this you know in case it doesn't fit, <laughs> exactly. bring exactly. it back. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. And, uh, and do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Yes, five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to open this thing and and this guy who works there, sort of with his middle aged guy who works there, goes, you you, know, you have to um you have to take that to the uh, checkout. So you can't open that yourself. I was just because I I don't know. I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of you know prophylactics and things. The novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And uh, so I just left it. I thought, forget it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take these to the counter because you never. It's like if you get served by a by a woman, it's sort of still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. You're gonna fill them up with water and throw them at students. <laughs> and. Um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought 
for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a, uh... Two-pack. A two-pack of... Yeah, what was it? Condoms. Wh wasn't it about buy one, get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously, that'd be... That'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 one for the kids. Take them down, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but, um... So that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous, uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They, they were the early days. Um. Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with her for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so, do. sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was, that was a hell of a, she went, oh, I remember when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff, like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, Well, no, she your didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course prizes. she didn't. That's what, that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, innit, over, no, over no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if- if you're- if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for- for <laughs> little baby Jesus? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've- I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get- I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, because what, what, I, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff is the expectations. I prefer it. If I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop and she comes back from work and go, do you want to go out? But you don't Rather do than, that. No, I do now and again, but it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da. It, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know how like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote! That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with, uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. said- That's like amazing. But you can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something now. It isn't. No, they do, I don't know what that means. No, no, they don't know they just make up things they say. They say. They, they say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy such time. a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a, it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- But what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work. Yeah. And we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas- Again, that- that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like, um, holidays, when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises can, someone with a holiday how unless can you, you win surprised? it on a game show? How can you be surprised? How can you go, bloody hell, I'm on holiday? Suzanne did it with me. 
she sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, nice. and I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No, she wouldn't like it as much and I won't pick the right place and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, well, it was a me- uh, yeah. But to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> He talks about himself like a crab. <laughs> oh, God. Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just He's a- 33 now and his knee's around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just me back's been playing up a bit and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But, hold well on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at 33. Well, it's, it's definitely something, it's just not very good. Subsidence? Saying. I don't know, I've just said to Susanna, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not- <laughs> This isn't as good as it used to be! <laughs> he's washing up! Oh! He says he's got nothing in the flat, that's why he has to do a shop every day, cos he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're gonna wanna eat. But that's why you get a- but do, you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe a, a dozen meals, don't you? So you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I gonna have chicken or am I gonna have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. Yeah, but I always come down to one of uh, half a dozen meals. You've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've There's got nothing got too much to the hands, There's nothing wrong with nipping to the supermarket. There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you it had one thing, you had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't be bothered. All, couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Carl in an interview with him, I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV, um, a while back on the thing called The Culture Show. Oh, yeah. Lucy too. And I'll tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair being interviewed, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking round? Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally yeah. looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm doing that. And either. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I met a guy, funny you mentioned that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him and we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? <laughs> you know, uh, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh who speaks God. sense. Oh, God. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just and the they way sort they... of greased it up a bit just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? And I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, le- must she be gave about you a book fi- to people. No, no, she, she started colouring my head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder, she's col- doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that like, I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> Sure, she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched like other people who were on. Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You just have to go around to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going. No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get the in glare. people's not, eyes. They got to because health and safety. The light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing it again. How do you cope with this newfound um, interest in in you? As a person, I've got an idea, Steve. By the way, you know, my, my the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Sure, when they see him in the yeah, street, yeah, with yeah, his little yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah, right. I'm going to do a tour um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play. Or uh, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh-huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. With. Or yeah, or yeah. whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to have you seen this bald-headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send uh, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures. Uh, on sh- if you own a shop, but a big picture of him. If you just, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. <laughs> Oh, he's only gonna rain it down for a whole fucking year. 
That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I've found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but- Well, let's- let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I, I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Hmm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you All mean? The, yeah, I mean, I, 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 since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way- I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects How eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds. He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? <laughs> but there's why one Velcro not? manufacturer going, yes, at, at last. last. He said what needed to be said. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing that carried a pot on your head? For- for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that? Well, no, I've- I've- I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the- the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you gotta wear a tie. Yeah, but- th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never <laughs> wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro <laughs> shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, or because, take a bag. because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back- I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right? They wore a tie. They wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know- Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world look nicer with- with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So- so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie- its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, it right. was called a tie. It tied together. Okay. Yeah. So then, when we uh, we had buttons, that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of of smartness, like saying I've made an effort. Yeah. Okay. But now that would go away. So now you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his with his apples and oranges and his his keys and his sticks. He's making a nest out of. So it wouldn't- it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round- I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh no, oh no, but look- look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro! <laughs> it's a hat! Yeah, well that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story <laughs> about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds.
<laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? <laughs> no, but what, what I mean is, if, if someone- Stick the video on of, uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. <laughs> yeah, but, but then it's still news. If you, news is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you that's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the what, key- the key with news is the word new. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's it just, is. it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, cause you couldn't have, cause it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days, it doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news though, cause it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday, and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news, Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, Time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But yeah, but according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you. Uh, there was an earthquake. When was it? Yesterday. Phew. That's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two. You only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, "You got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense." No, but the world uh, but you're is- You're not- you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it- it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful it might to be know it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but, but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's, sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's, it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- There's Like a I voice. said- Hiya! Well, could you just move out of the well, way it for can us? be anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's, that's chicken not gonna freak noise, people out. No, but it sort of makes you smile. But you you go, oh, let's get well, out of the way. You're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you, and you smile because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something <laughs> clucking in my way. Do 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 quack. Do 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 quack. Oh, that's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically it's a, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh Jesus! I'll Christ. skip past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, his mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just popped that <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> just popped that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it'll probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't- she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out. Put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens. Don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <laughs> worry- worry hole with worries and that's us. Worry hole. Everyone's got to <laughs> fill the worry hole with worry- We've got to assume worry. that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. I, believe with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails, cause it made me get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dahl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is, 
but he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in you, no? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He saw the match enough, so we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets strange. So strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine <laughs> how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So it's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, hey, man alive. It's like. Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds, where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that, because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed, it's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go, there you go, well, that seems cheap, well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this, we bought this, like, you know, uh, flat and what have you, and we bought the bed, and then, uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. No, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, cos he had one in his van that he used to use now and again, if he was, like, travelling round, he'd just keep in the, in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke yeah. who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Alf, so Uncle Alf, right, it, well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him, he's the one who slept in a dinghy. Is the one it's cos his mattress was in his car! <laughs> I know, yeah, why didn't he go, oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy, I'm not gonna go out and get the- not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, my dad got me- got me his mattress, and, uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this, and I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Ooh. Mm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing too much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road, yes. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> And not a real place! <laughs> it's like fucking it's a, it's a children's TV <laughs> program! Unbelievable! <laughs> oh god! Oh! Just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden <laughs> ticket. Oh god! <laughs> oh god! The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them, and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> Poor little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? They don't get on, and it's the same with them. They don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What for honey? Yeah, no, but like I say. You can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so get ten bees, Yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you- you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it that's doesn't. Funny. You can't eat it, and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy, and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. 
So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. <laughs> Imagine keeping ten bees! <laughs> well, just get them to do do the graft. If you've got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they'll go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No! Whereas if you've got ten bees, y you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! They, they, no! It's not a workhouse. Bees <laughs> don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've got a bad back. Anyway, back to, uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> <laughs> The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not- uh, I, I can't see how that's gonna ever evolve. No, well, they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well. you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, look at the state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest so worry. So as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still gonna- oh, I wish we'd- I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at, um, look how things do change. But why are we all gonna get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um- The air? Or yeah, the just, hair? Yeah, you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing, and we're not going to look that healthy, and uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, look at the state of that. Well, and that's because they've been with the human evolution. But, but the stuff in the sea is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark, so they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> if they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper or something. It's the, it was just a head. But Carl, the a reason- A fish that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. <laughs> Watched a program about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat? just someone I've been sort of working with. Sure, a mate of yours. He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're gonna have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're gonna have something new, make it- make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman, and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Cause it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've weird. uh we've we've come there, Rick, to to where we entered. It was this sense. time last year when we first started the podcast that um we were talking about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, which is th th the, the last series, uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I, to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, m really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I don't, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not gonna survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this, um, island I can eat, give me the, the crocodile's penis. So it wouldn't bother me. 
wouldn't, I wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that program, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's all right. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it, the texture's probably the same as lots of other things. What mean? would hunger do to you though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, uh, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms. I think you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up, but when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of, uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. I'd say who's been eating that. How come <laughs> I've got this? <laughs> you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. Well, thanks for listening. That was the, uh, the Christmas podcast. Um, we should say the winner of the last competition we did. Um, they can win the, um, the podcast book and, uh, Flanimals and, um, the extras book that's out. Still available. All available. And the CD. The three, so, the three CD set of the, yeah, of the best of the podcast? Yeah, Is that right? Series one? Uh, brand new. Hour. If you haven't got that, get out. Maybe you've got some record tokens. Yeah, if you've got Christmas. record tokens or book tokens, those are the perfect, uh, things to spend them on. Or fifty pounds from your auntie. Exactly. Uh, go and buy one of those. Um, and the winner was, uh, Stephanie Prow from the Wirral. Well done, Steph. Well done. Well, thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. That's the end. That's the end of the Christmas podcast and the end of this, uh, this team for a little while. Yeah. It's been great. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye and Happy New Year. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. It's all right. What um, are you doing now? You got time for a coffee or something? I can't now. I'm going to the, um, you know, the orphanage for, uh, terminally ill kids. Oh, yeah. I'm going down there. I'll go down there every Christmas and see yeah, like, Do you? E entertain them. Oh, stuff, well, yeah. I bet that's lovely for them. Yeah, no, I've, uh, actually written a song I'm going to perform. They, they see the office and see that I sing in that. I've, uh, You've written a song for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could we hear a bit? I mean, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but no, you've got, you got the guitar there, is it? Yeah. Um, I mean, this for a, a kid, he's a brave little guy, he's only about ten, but, um, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking, he's, ah. Oh. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's coming soon, though you ain't got a mommy or daddy, Santa still loves you, and he's riding on his reindeer. To trample down the gloom So don't cry It's Christmas Santa's coming soon Don't cry It's Christmas Santa's feeling kind Though you know You'll never see him He's not just in your mind and it's not that he's invisible It's because you're going blind So don't cry It's Christmas Santa's feeling kind Don't cry It's Christmas Santa's on his way Though he's got a billion children and he's only got one day You've got slightly less than that If I were you I'd pray But don't cry It's Christmas And it sounds a little gay I wish that'd be quite moving for everyone Yeah, I'm just... I would, I just, I would ask you now to not play that song Oh no, too late now, they expect me But I don't, I... I'm not but sure it's going to be as well received no, as you perhaps hope. I think that's better than any gift, and I don't really want to give gifts because they're expensive. So. Sure.